hello, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere, and it is time to continue our adventure into the realm of the Great Underground Empire. It is time to take on Zork 3. Now, let us uh, start with this way. Uh, at the end of 2, we started going down an endless stair. As in a dream, you see yourself tumbling down a great dark staircase. All about you are shadowy images of struggles against fierce opponents and diabolical traps. They give way to another round of images of imposing stone figures, a cool, clear lake, and now of an old yet oddly youthful man. He turns towards you slowly, his long silver hair dancing around about him in a fresh breeze. You have reached the final test, my friend. You are proved clever and powerful, but this is not yet enough. Seek me when you feel yourself worthy. The dream dissolves around you as his last words echo through the void. And thus we are starting Zork Three, the Dungeon Master. Endless Stair. You are at the bottom of a seemingly endless stair, winding its way upward beyond your vision. An eerie light coming from all around you casts strange shadows on the wall. To the south is a dark and winding trail. Your old friend, the Brass Lantern, is at your feet. And like I'm going to do, it's going to be Maximum Verbosity! <laughs> Alright, get Lantern. And turn on Lantern. The lamp is now on. Okay. So let's head south. I mean, there's only... Uh, junction. You're at the junction of a north-south passage and an east-west passage. To the north, you can make out the bottom of stairway. The ways to the east and south are relatively cramped. But a wider trail heads or leads to the west. Standing before you is a great rock. Embedded within is an elvish sword. Look at that sword layer. Creepy crawl. You are in a dark and quite creepy crawlway with passages leaving to the north, east, south, and southwest. Let's go south. A foggy room. You are in a dank passage filled with a wispy fog. A spooky passageway leads north, and a wider path heads off to the south. To the west, the path leaves the rock and enters an eerie, shadowy land. Mm. Yeah, one more south. Lakeshore. You're in a wide cavern on the north shore of a small lake. Some polished stone steps lead to the southeast, and a sheer rock face prevents any movement around the lake to the southwest cavern is dimly lit from above. Let's see if I can turn that lantern off. Oh, drop lantern. Okay. Well, let's jump in the lake. You are nearly paralyzed by the icy waters as you swim into the center of the lake. On the lake, you are floating on the surface of the lake. The water is ice cold, and your ability to survive here for long is quite is very questionable. A swim north puts you at your starting point. Conditions to the east are poor, where the lake turns into a into swamp. The west and south shores are suitable for walking, however. Western Shore. You're on the western shore of the lake. The ground here is quite hard, but a few sickly reeds manage to grow near the water's edge. The only path leads into the rocks to the south. Well, let's go south. Scenic Vista! You're in a small chamber carved in the rocks, with the sole exit to the north. Mounted on one of the walls is a table labeled Scenic Vista whose featureless surface is angled towards you. One might believe that the table was used to indicate points of interest in the view from this spot, like those found in many parks. 
On the other hand, your surroundings are far from spacious, and by no stretch of the imagination could this spot be considered scenic. An indicator above the table reads 3. Mounted on one wall is a flaming torch, which fills the room with a flickering light. The indicator above the table flickers briefly, then changes to 4. Well, let me get that torch. Taken. Wait. Okay. The indicator above the table flickers briefly and then changes to one. Well, let's uh, wait again. And wait again. The indicator above the table flickers briefly and changes to two. Hmm. Touch table. You touch the table and are instantly transported to another place. Room eight. This is a small chamber carved out of the rock at the end of a short crawl. On the wall is crudely chiseled the number eight. The only apparent exit to the east seems to be a blur and a loud whirring sound resounds through the rock. A spray can is in the corner. A large type in large type is the legend Frobo's Magic Guru Repellent. Guru Repellent. Well, let me get that Gru repellent. I'll tell you that. That's going to be good stuff then. Taken. Now we wait. You suddenly find yourself back in the viewing room. Hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, now change to a three. Good. Well, then, uh, touch the table. Let's find out where we go. Damp Passage. This is a particularly damp spot even by dungeon standards. You can see a crossroad to the west, and two nearly identical passages lead east and northeast. A stone channel, wide and deep, steeply descends into the room from the south. It is covered with moss and lichen, and is far too slippery to climb. The channel crosses the room, but the opening where it once continued north is now blocked by rubble. Drop torch. Okay, I'll do that. And you suddenly find yourself back in the viewing room. Okay. All right, now we're back to the western shore. And I'm going to save my game. Save. Chance. Okay, because I think it's going to be a wise idea. I'm also using a walkthrough. All right, all right, jump in the lake! <laughs> okay. The shock of entering the fridge. Okay, I have the Gru repellent. Let's see. Jump in the lake. Oh, okay, I guess I was supposed to do that. Damn. You are below the surface of the lake. It turns out that the lake is quite shallow and the bomb is only a few feet below you. Considering the frigid temperature of the water, you should probably not plan an extended stay. The lake bomb is sandy and a few hardy plants and algae live there. There is the Gru repellent. Out of the corner of your eye, a small shiny object appears in the sand. A moment later, it's gone. Get all. It's yours for a moment, but it drops from your ass. You can't take it. A shiny object slips from your glass and back onto the floor of the lake, where it is covered in sand. A large, hungry-looking fish is swimming in the neighborhood. Taken. You can't take that. Shiny object. You reach that sign, the sign, simple golden amulet. Oh, I got the 
Oh, I got the golden amulet. Good. Hey, I got everything. Well, that worked. All right. Southern Shore. Let's go south to the Southern Shore. All right, so we got everything. You're on the southern shore. You're on the south shore of the lake. Rock formations prevent movement to the west, and the thickening swamp to the east makes the going all but impossible. To the south, where the beach meets a rock formation, you can make out a dark passage sloping steeply upward into the rock. Okay. Spray repellent on self. The spray smells like a mixture of old socks and burning rubber. If I were a Gru, I'd surely stay. I'd sure stay away. <laughs> okay. South. It is pitch black. South. There are sinister gurgling noises in the darkness all around you. It is pitch black. The ground continues to slope upwards away from the lake. You can barely detect a dim light from the east. Dim light to the east? Oh. Let's see. So. Let's see. Key room. You are between some rock and a dark place. The room is lit dimly from above, revealing a lone, dark path sloping down to the west. To one side of the room is a large manhole cover. The light from above seems to be focused in the center of the room, where a single key is laying in the dust. You know what? I'm getting that key. That horrible smell is much less, less pungent now. Mm. Open manhole cover. The cover is moved a bit to one side, revealing a small hole leading into darkness. Damn. Aqueduct. You're in a wide stone channel, part of the water supply system for the Great Underground Empire. The source of water was a waterfall to the south which has long since dried up. Water flowed along the aqueduct to the north. This region is lit from above, although the source of light is not apparent. Okay. Hi, Ark. You are now on one of the tallest arches, oh, arch, <laughs> of the aqueduct. Hundreds of feet above a rocky chasm, the immensity of the aqueduct project is apparent from here. Stone supports rise from the rock floor to form massive arches which traverse the region from north to south. The water carrying channel here is wide and deep to the west and far below. You can make out a balcony which must command a wide view of the aqueduct. Okay. Yeah, I can live that. Let's go north again. Water slide! You are near the northern end of this segment of the aqueduct system. To the south and slightly uphill, the bulk of the aqueduct looms ominously, towering above a gorge. To the north, the water channel drops precipitously and enters a rocky hole. The damp moss and lichen would certainly make that a one-way trip. That damp moss and Well, let's go down the slide. Damp passage. This is a particularly damp spot, even by dungeon. Yeah, we went through all this before. <laughs> because there's our torch. Well, let's get the torch. I want that torch. Taken. Thank you. The junction. You are at the junction. And... and Hey, there's that sword again. Mm, I 
still think we'll get that later. So we'll just leave it there for right now. South, creepy call. Southwest. Land of Shadow. You're at the eastern end of a dark, featureless landscape of shallow hills. Pass to the east and southeast. Re-enter the rock. Save. And yeah, we're going to save his chance. Through the shadows, a cloaked and hooded figure appears before you, blocking the northwestern exit from the room and carrying a brightly glowing sword. From nowhere, the sword from the junction appears in your hand, wildly glowing. Mel, no, let's attack him with the sword. A good para, your sword wounds the hooded figure. The figure has a light wound, which hasn't affected its seemingly great strength. The hooded figure thrusts, but you fight back and send it flying to the ground. Attack figure with sword. Well, there's only one thing to do. A good slash, but it misses by a mile. Your quick reflexes cannot stop the hooded figure's stroke. You are hit. Well... Good parry, your sword wounds the hooded figure. The figure has some wounds and is probably not capable of hindering your movements. The hooded figure catches you off guard and wounds you. A good stroke, but it's too slow. The hooded figure catches you off guard and wounds you. A sharp thrust and the hooded figure is badly wounded. The figure appears to be badly hurt and defenseless. The hooded figure attempts a thrust, but its weakened state prevents, prevents hitting you. Oh, wait. I'm getting that hood. You slowly remove the hood from your badly wounded opponent and recoil in horror at the sight of your own face. Weary and wounded, a faint smile comes to the lips, and then the face starts to change very slowly into that of an old wizened person. The image fades, and with it, the body of your hooded opponent. The cloak remains on the ground. Well, get cloak. You know, I just entered it, you know, so I'm going to go northeast. Italian walks north, no, northwest, no, northwest, no, north, barren area. West of the junction where the rockbound passage widens out. Go eat. There's the junction. Okay, we're back at the junction. All right, now that we're back at the junction, let's go west. Okay, barren area. You are west of the junction where the rockbound passage widens out into a large, flat area. Although the land here is barren, you can see vegetation to the west. South of here is a mighty wall of stone, ancient and crumbly. To the southwest, the wall has decayed enough to form an opening through which seeps a thin mist. The trail dips sharply into the rocky terrain to the northwest. Well, let's go west again. Cliff. This is a remarkable spot in the dungeon. Perhaps 200 feet above you is a gaping hole in the Earth's surface through which pours bright sunshine. A few seedlings from the world above, nurtured by the sunlight and occasional rain, have grown into giant trees, making this a vital virtual oasis in the desert of the underground empire. Uh, to the west is a sheer precipice, dropping nearly 50 feet to jagged rocks below. The way south is barred by a forbidding stone wall, crumbling from age. There is a jagged opening in the wall to the southwest, through which leaks a fine mist. The land to the east looks lifeless and barren. 
A rope is tied to one of the large trees here and is dangling over the side of the cliff, reaching down to the shell below. It seems as if somebody has been here recently, as there is some fresh bread lying beneath one of the other trees. Uh, you seem to hear from the southwest the sounds of the sea. Well, let's get the bread. Taken. So I have a piece of whey bread. Okay, climb down. Rope. Okay, this is a lock strewn ledge near the base of a tall cliff. The bottom of the cliff is another 15 feet below. You have little hope of climbing up the cliff's face, but you might be able to scramble down from here. Although it's doubtful you could return. A long piece of rope is dangling down from the top of the cliff and is within your reach. A large chest closed and locked is lying among bold. Hello! Wait, time passes. Wait. At the edge of the cliff above you, a man appears. He looks down at you and speaks, Hello down there! You seem to have a problem. Maybe I can help you. He chuckles in an upset, unsettling sort of way. <laughs> Perhaps if you tied that chest to the end of the rope, I might be able to drag it up for you. Then I'll be more than happy to help you up. He laughs again. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Tie rope to chest. The chest is now tied to the rope. The man above you looks pleased. Now there's a good friend. Thank you very much indeed. He pulls on the rope and the chest is lifted into the top of the cliff and out of sight. With a short laugh, he disappears. I'll be back in a short while, are his last words. Hmm. Well... Well, let's wait. I said wait, not wait backslash wait. Wait. A familiar voice calls down to you. Are you still there? He bellows with a coarse laugh. Well, then grab onto the rope and we'll see what we can do. All righty. You grab securely on the rope. The man starts to heave on the rope, and within a few moments, you arrive at the top of the cliff. The man removes the last few valuables from the chest and prepares to leave. You've been a good sport. Here, take this for whatever good it is. I can't see that I'll be needing one. He hands you a plain wooden staff from the bottom of the chest and begins examining his valuables. Uh -huh. Well... There you have it. Your friend examines his valuables with great pride. Hmm. Down. You are at the base of a steep cliff. Directly above you is a wide ledge, and far above that, some natural sunlight can be seen. To the northeast is a steeply climbing path, and the ground becomes sandy towards the south. Hmm. You are at the shore of an amazing underground sea, the topic of many a legend among adventurers. Few were known to have arrived at this spot, and fewer to return. There is a heavy surf, and a breeze is blowing on shore. The land rises steeply to the east, and quicksand prevents movement to the south. A thick mist covers the ocean, and extends over the hills to the east. A path heads north along the beach. Mm. Well, let's wait. Time passes. Let's wait. Passing alongside the shore now is an old boat, reminiscent of an ancient Viking ship. Standing on the prow of the ship is an old and crusty sailor, peering out over the misty ocean. Say, hello, sailor!
The seaman looks up and maneuvers the boat towards shore. He cries out, I have waited three ages for someone to say those words and save me from sailing this endless ocean. Please accept this gift. You may find it useful. He throws something which falls near you in the sand, then sails off towards the west, singing a lively but somewhat uncouth sailor song. Yeah, well, get the vial. I think it's a vial. Taken. Hey, it's a vial. All right. Let's head east. Land of shadow. Head east. Land of shadow. Land of dark shadows and shallow hills would stretch out all in all directions. Da da da. Far above, shroud and mist. You can barely make out the ceiling of the enormous cavern. Eastern end of a dark, featureless landscape of shallow hills. Path to the east and south. East. Creepy crawl. Okay, we're back at the creepy crawl. Let's wait. Time passes. Let's wait again. Time passes. Something should happen. Uh, there's a great tremor from within the earth. The entire dungeon shakes violently and loose debris starts to fall from above you. Alright, let's go east. Tight squeeze. This is a very low and narrow passage leading east to west. Crystal grot. Whoa. This is a chamber of breathtaking beauty. Mighty stalagmites form structured shapes of rock encrusted with crystalline formations. Phosphorescent mosses fed by a trickle of water from some unseen source above make the crystals glow and sparkle with every color of the rainbow. There is an opening to the west and a man-made passage heads south. Whoa. Hmm. Okay. All right. Royal Hall. This is the northern end of a large hall with a vaulted ceiling. A long tiled hallway leads north through a tall arch. Although the origin or purpose of this room is unclear, there is a large rendering of the royal seal of Lord Dimwit Flathead carved on the wall. Well, hello. All right. Let's go south again. Great door. This is the south end of a monumental hall, full of dust and debris from a recent earthquake. To the east is a great iron door, rusted shut. To its right, however, is a gaping cleft in the rock and behind a cleared area. Oh, well, let's go east. We're going to go east. Museum entrance. This is the entrance to the Royal Museum, the finest and grandest in the great underground empire. Uh, to the south, down a few steps, is the entrance to the Royal Puzzle, and to the east, through a stone door, is the Royal Jewel Collection. A wooden door to the north is open and leads to the Museum of Technology. Uh, to the west is a great iron door, rusted shut. To its left, however, is a cleft in the rock providing a western route away from the museum. Okay. So. Hmm. Let's uh, open east door. Door is now open. Technology Museum. This is a large hall which hosted the technological exhibits of the great underground empire. A door to the south is open. Directly in front of you is a large golden machine, which has a seat with a console in front. On the console is a single button and a dial connected to a three-digit display, which reads 948. The machine is surprisingly shiny and shows few signs of age. A strange gray machine, some shaped somewhat like a clothes dryer, is on one side of the room. On the other side of the hall is a powerful looking black machine, a tight tangle of wires, pipes, and motors. A plaque is mounted near the door. The writing is faded, however, and cannot be made out clearly. The two machines seem to be in ma bad shape, rusting in many spots. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Set dial to seven seven six. The dial is set to seven seven six. All righty. And I think at this point, we're going to save the game and call it an episode here. As always, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X elsewhere, inviting you to subscribe to the channel. And I hope you've watched to the end as I've played through this so far. Uh, next time around, we're going to move that little machine, that new looking gold machine. I'm going to wonder what that does. I think it does something really at a time, if I remember right over the years. Uh, once I, uh, once we say it, once we uh, continue on then, uh, I'm going to continue through all of the Zork games. As you know, I played through the three that came before this chronologically. Zork, starting with Zork Zero, Revenge of Mega Boss. Zork 2, well, Zork 1, then, uh, the Great Underground Empire. Zork 2, the Wizard of Frobos. I plan to play through the others. Now, these are, the the first three Zork games are the oldest, so they'll be the quickest of the bunch, as, you, as you'll see. Uh, I'm also working on other games. I finished Gibbs recently, so I'm about to start a new game next in the lineup. And uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I've also finished the Tales of Monkey Island, which was the last of the Monkey Island franchise. So I'm going to pick. I've I have another LucasArts game, LucasArts Lucasfilm game, ready to play. I'm also working my way through Call of Cthulhu, the 2018 release, which has been a very fun game so far. I do runs through the game of Monstrum. I am working my way through the Space Quest. Well. I f Before I get to Space Quest, I uh, am working my way through Little Nightmares. I'm also working my way through the Space Quest franchise. I'm on the fifth title of that, Roger Wilco, The Next Mutation. And I'm also working my way through the Doom franchise. I'm currently on Final Doom, and I'm getting closer and closer to the end of that. And uh, next time around, and all those videos, they premiere 3 p.m. Eastern Time. In fact, I have about 14 games I go through, games and franchises that show up at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, in the mornings, I have videos popping up too. Well, just Tuesday through Saturday. Tuesday usually sees a FIC reading go up. Uh, Wednesday, we'll see a, a, another game go up. Uh, Thursday, we'll see either a Monstrum 2 run or a Dead by Daylight run go up. It all depends on what I can fit in. Uh, Friday, fighting game playthroughs going up, uh, the story mode. And Saturday usually has a retrospective video premiere. Right. And these all premiere at 10 a.m. Eastern. So again, please subscribe to the channel, check everything out. I'm sure you'll find a game you like on there. And until next time. This, again, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Genex Elsewhere. Bye!